Good afternoon. To all of our listeners, uh, we're back again and we've had a big upgrade in actual fact with our uh, our system and our podcasting room is uh, is really quite incredible looking now. And thank you for listening in um, on this podcast. Um, I have to say, I'm going to be letting my colleague Samuel Killeran uh, take the uh, the lead on this one and I'm going to feed him some questions. So Sam, hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mark. And how are you doing? I'm doing well. Good, good, good. Now, you've been studying through all sorts of different areas of law in readiness for our podcasts, and you've been flicking through an awful lot of um, interesting points, and you've arrived at this one as a point of discussion. Tell us, what are you going to be discussing with me today? Well, we were going to discuss what everybody has been discussing over the last week, and that is Gary Lineker on Twitter. Okay, Gary Lineker on Twitter. And for those that have been uh, living under a rock, Sam, tell us, what has happened with Gary Lineker on Twitter? Gary Lineker tweeted a personal opinion where he said something along the lines of the language used by the government in relation to its immigration bill is similar to that of 1930s Germany. So considered as controversial in itself, I presume... Very controversial. By who? Well, mainly by the BBC initially. And the BBC temporarily suspended him and he was unable to present Match of the Day last weekend. Well, let, let's just pause there. So, so first things first, we've had a tweet which has been put out to the world by a celebrity, a legendary footballer and, of course, the presenter of many BBC uh, uh, sports Uh, programs but the contents of what he's actually you know put down on I would say on paper but out to the world on Twitter has caused a stir because those in the you know the, the the head of the BBC and the network have said that he's shouldn't have said it in the way that he did and therefore they wish to, what, punish him for it? They wish to take action against him for it? Well, initially they were saying that he had breached their impartiality rules where they say that the BBC and those that represent it should stay impartial at all times and not provide personal views yeah. on politics. OK, so of course that begs the question, what... um. What are you allowed to put on different platforms? He's put that on as an individual, but of course he is someone that is in the uh, in the public eye, of course. Mm. He has just what can only be described, I'm presuming, from his perspective, as innocently putting out an opinion to the public from his perspective, and he's being told he's not allowed to do that because of rules within the BBC. Yes, so... The impartiality rules, so... What I'm trying to get to the bottom of, Sam, is we do an awful lot of social media law. So we understand that there are there is a line and you must ensure you don't cross that line when you are dealing with the public. Okay, so we've discussed previously on previous podcasts about defamation and, uh, you, you, you know, you and I have gone into great detail about what's considered as acceptable and what's not and what can be defamatory. But this is a completely different type of issue on social media and those which... Um, you know, are given this sort of freedom of expression, freedom of speech to be able to, you know, give their opinion on something. And he's being restricted on that and it by the actual BBC themselves. Yes, well, you have the key issue with, obviously, we live in a democracy and the foundation of a democracy is to have free and open debate. So anybody should be able to criticise the government without fear of punishment. However, in this situation, the BBC is saying it's in breach of its own rules as to impartiality. Now, pause there again. So, Gary Lineker works for the BBC. Is he an employee or is he contracted in to do certain tasks or certain shows? Uh, No, this is where it gets interesting. So, Gary Lineker is actually a freelancer for the BBC. So, his understanding was that the rules do not apply to his personal Twitter account as he's not directly employed by the BBC. Okay, so he's approached them, we presume, behind closed doors and he's expressed to them his dissatisfaction with them um, being upset with him and wishing to take action. Um, They've listened to him. 
However, they've still taken action anyway. And this is what you went to say a minute ago. So what, what action did they take? And we're going to the, the repercussions after that in a moment. Yeah, well, he was not allowed to present match of the day last weekend. He was suspended. But then a lot of his co-pundits refused to present alongside in Solidarity, him. Solidarity, from what I read. Yeah. Okay, so he has said something on Twitter which the BBC didn't agree with. They've said it breaches their impartiality rules. He has said, okay, well, to be, to be fair, and you know, from my perspective, this is what we're, we're presuming is the case from what we're being told and what we can see. He's then saying, well, actually, I'm a, I'm a freelancer. You know, I don't actually conform to what you're saying, but you've taken action against me anyway because you're concerned that the impartiality rule will then come back to bite you. And because I've said something against the parliament, you've sought to punish me. Do you you think that that was going to be the end of it? Possibly. But it wasn't, because then everyone actually stood behind Gary Lineker, those of his his colleagues, um, other presenters, from all over the network. You know, we're talking radio, we're talking the TV, we're talking, you know, early morning stuff, in the evening stuff, you know, prime time stuff. Everybody seemed to just stop and say, we're not doing this. This is not acceptable You've gone too far. That is the case. He has had a lot of people side with him. And as a result, it seems that BBC have now released a statement. That they are going to review their impartiality rules. It was to do with social media, wasn't it, specifically? To do it specifically with, to do with social media and who it applies to. And we will have to obviously await... Mm. If they're going to make that well, public, I don't think they. Probably, I don't think they will. I think they're just saying now. You know, we we we're going to reconsider our social media guidelines in terms of the impartiality rules against certain certain yeah. staff members. Um, and I have to, you know, use the term staff member loosely because, of course, a freelancer is still acting on behalf of the BBC. They may well be a freelancer, but of course, you know, when you really look into it in terms of the law, it comes down to you're acting on behalf of that organisation as a member of their team. So, interesting. Now, what are your thoughts when it comes to the real issue here? And that is that he said something which he should be given full reign to do under the you know uh, you know the, the, the way that, that it's developed over the years about freedom of speech and and everything certainly to do with social media should he be given is he should he have the right should i say should he have the right to actually say what he wants to say and if he gets backlash he gets backlash that's his decision that he's actually put it out there um should he not even have any backlash because it's just his opinion what are your thoughts on that my thoughts are... In, in the context of what has happened with Gary Lineker. In the context. Gary Lineker, we have to remember, he is a, a sports pundit. He's not a political editor for the BBC. He's not a news reporter. Had it been a political editor or news reporter expressing such views on social media, I, could, uh, I can see how the impartiality rules mm. would certainly more likely be in breach. But... Do you think it's had the same effect, though, in these circumstances? Do you think it's had the, or could have the same effect? Because it ended up going all over the news, all over the media. Everyone, everyone has been talking about this. So then we now take the political stance and we consider what he said. The, what is, and these are the repercussions of what he said. Um, this is what's happened as a result of that. And do you think it could affect the bill itself? I think it could affect the bill. Gary Lineker, somebody who does have a, a lot of a following, following. Yeah, he has yeah. a large following. People, there will be people out there who do take his, uh, do value his opinion, and they may, uh, they may not, they may be ignorant to the bill until Gary Lineker's tweet. They may, uh, they may now be more interested in it. And I don't. There's nothing wrong with that. You should be able to criticize the government if you feel the desire to do so in the same way you can support the government that is a a foundation that we should all be able to have for open and frank debate it's always a a worrying idea if you're going to censor such debate and people are more and more in fear of the repercussions because that is that's not the society we live in one thing we haven't actually touched on is 
because it does seem like we're not being impartial or certainly you know with with comments that we've made suggest that we're you know surprised that he was uh well they attempted to punish him in in the way that they did so let, let's just make it clear you know as a, for the purposes of this podcast you know we're not going to show either way what our position is but i think it's only fair to see from the other side. Now, do you recall anyone uh, that's been in the news that has said that they don't agree with what Gary Lineker said because of his position in the public eye? Well, the BBC are saying that they are regarded as being a impartial broadcaster, a well-respected broadcaster across the globe, yeah. and that's partly because they are seen as impartial, whether you agree with that or not. And, uh, and they feel that any representative of theirs expressing such political views will risk the reputation of the BBC. Yes, so Sam, um, th- we, we've mentioned uh, BBC, we've mentioned mm. uh, Jeremy Hunt has, has taken issue, but one real sort of elephant in the room is that we haven't actually discussed one person from the political uh, oh. side of things that has really taken umbrage to what Gary Lineker said. Do you know who? Yes, we are talking about the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman. She yeah. has been pushing the bill. She's a big supporter of it. And she has taken issue with Gary Lineker's tweet. And not just is it, it's the way that he's worded his tweet, what it looks like to the public eye that the government are yeah. likened. If he if, if he's saying it, then there may be others uh, that will follow suit that liken them to 1930s Germany. Yeah, some are saying it's a bit of an extreme comment to, and it in some way it diminishes the atrocities of the Holocaust to mm-hmm. compare our current government to 1930s mm. Germany. But even when you put aside the 1930s Germany point, she also had issue that he was saying anything to, to, you know, to the degree he did in the first place because it could <laughs> and now possibly will result in it affecting the bill passing. Whereas if he hadn't said anything in the first place, mm. it may have gone a different track or may still do. But Of course, of course. But then we have to remember with the, the context of what he is saying, you know, there are plenty of... Uh, controversial comments that are made in the House of Commons under the protection of parliamentary privilege. Explain a bit more. Under parliamentary privilege, anything that is said within the House of Commons, for example, cannot, uh, you could never issue a claim for defamation because it comes up with absolute privilege. And uh, MPs before have, uh, on occasions, abused that privilege in famous cases, for example, when Ryan Giggs managed to take out an injunction to prevent the publishing of an article, I believe, in relation to an extramarital affair. Yeah. And uh, and MPs felt that such injunctions shouldn't be allowed, so they were using their parliamentary privilege to express the details of the injunction, so essentially the public become known of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's one example. So to liken it to that, if things should be discussed behind closed doors, we, you know, we 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 need to keep a lid on this. Or if we say that, then you know, we know that if if as you say, Parliament were to have discussions, then you know they it, it, they get their par- parliamentary privilege uh, protection. Uh, how do you relate that to Gary Lineker, though? In in you know in in its. Oh. Just in the context, with that is, uh, you see at times, where certainly with the, uh, the government and the opposition, how heated it can get in the Commons. Yeah, and yeah. there are, you know, on occasions, quite insulting language thrown across at each other in a sort of very heated debate fashion. And sometimes you think those remarks can be a little bit too far. Yeah. Yet they are obviously allowed under okay. parliamentary privilege. So just one final point before we go. Um, what has happened as a result of everything that Gary Lineker has said and then how the BBC reacted? Uh, do you think that there's going to be change now when it comes to... It was quite clear that everyone stood behind him and it was so powerful. It was so powerful. They all stood in solidarity with Gary Lineker and were able to actually force change because they all crossed their arms, sat themselves down and said, we're not budging. 
This is not acceptable. We don't agree with this. And quite frankly, it looks like they won. They really did. And it became a very, very widely spoken issue around the country, possibly even around the world, that a group of people that have control within the sports industry were able to all stand together and say to the BBC, no. How do you think that's going to change for the future? Because it's clearly shown, it's been in the public eye, we're able to see, mm. on you know, it, it literally right in front of our eyes, that someone can actually cause that much of a stir and people can stand behind them and it can actually cause someone as powerful as BBC to step back and say, okay, fair enough. Because they had to, surely. Because everyone was off the air, everyone was off the radio. What's going to happen? Well, the BBC, with their review, they're either going to go one of two ways. They're either going to tighten their rules around social media so it applies to, to more people, freelancers, so maybe if it was to happen again, there would be no grey area as to whether the person was in breach or not. Or... They may choose to relax their rules or perhaps keep them the same. Mm. So if they keep them the same, how do they deal with the the Gary Lineker point? Because if they keep them the same, then they're accepting that they shouldn't have actually taken that action against them in the first place. And they don't want to do that. So something else is going to happen. But it just shows, and I think this is going to be important as we move forward into uh, into the next sort of year, two years, three years, that if, if, if someone isn't happy with what decision an institution has made, have they got the power behind them and the gathering behind them to force change because of the fact that there's such a large group of people who are influential within themselves, they've got enough power behind them that they can actually stop an institution from doing something? Well, that's how, uh, generally speaking, that's how a democracy works. We all control in the, the, the electorate have ultimate power with the way they vote. You don't like... The, a government's actions, you may vote differently next time. I was walking you into that one and you answered it with flying colours, Sam, so thank you. So just to now finish this off, thank you so much for listening. If you wish to discuss this any further, perhaps pick up the phone. Perhaps consider it from a legal standpoint and see how we develop through when it comes into contracts, employment, when it comes into freedom of speech, when it comes to social media law, defamation, the scope of this is huge. So any further discussions, do pick up the phone, talk to us. If you need advice on anything, then please do. Samuel, thank you so much for joining me. That was very interesting. If you do need to get hold of us, 02380 235 979, or you can email info at laudit.co.uk. Thanks very much, Sam. Thank you, Mark. Take care.